Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here. I'd like to share some thoughts with you about success. As a musician, I've had the great fortune to concertize around the world, both as a pianist and as a symphony conductor. It is such a wonderful feeling to be able to work with musicians, many of which you don't speak their language, and yet this universal language of music tightens you into a very close organization and you're able to communicate ideas and beautiful thoughts without actually speaking their language. My journey as a musician started when I was very young. My parents noticed that whatever I heard on the radio, I could go to the piano and play it. And so I was able to study with an extraordinary teacher by the name of Ethel Leginska. And within two years, I won my first competition over students who were 25 years old. It went very quickly, and I vividly remember coming back to Jamaica at 11 uh, to play at the Ward Theater. I don't know if the Ward Theater still exists. I've been asked by many individuals how did you achieve all of these things? What's the secret? They would say to me, you know, I dream of being a singer, I dream of being a pianist, I dream. And I've said to them, it takes more than a dream. Helen Keller, the great writer, activist, stricken with blindness, made a wonderful statement that changed my life. She said, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight and no vision. And so the difference between a dreamer and a visionary is that a visionary has a plan. A plan to get from where they are to where they would like to be. And I would like to share with you what I call the Adam plan. A D A M. It stands for ability, discipline, attitude, and maintenance. Adam. There is a, I would say, a pernicious lie that is often told to individuals, sometimes to young people, with disastrous effect, that if you work hard, you can become anything you want to be. It's not true. It's simply not true. There is a requirement that must exist within that individual. They must have a basic ability, basic skill that fits the desired career. Practice doesn't give you ability. Practice refines your ability. Because you drill for oil, if there's no oil, the drilling will not produce oil. So we call it talent, we call it a gift, but it is imperative that one assess what natural skills you have that if worked on, you will be able to progress. To not properly assess these skills, it is equivalent to walking up a down escalator. If you stop for a second, you go right down to the bottom. 
How many times have I seen young people who want to be musicians? Oh, they love music. They do anything. And they practice and they practice and they practice. But they never get any better. Because they do not have, they have not assessed the skills necessary. Do they have the technical dexterity? Do they have the ear? And so whether by testing or by talking with someone who has achieved in that field to help you assess, do you have the requisite skill to achieve? Discipline, that's a rough one. I define discipline as daily self-organizing self. Daily organizing, self-organizing self. Discipline is a hard taskmaster. And you have to, every day, think about what goals you want to accomplish, how much time you have, and how can you use this time efficiently to accomplish this. When I conduct my orchestras and orchestras around the world, I do so from memory. I do not use a score. Recently, I was conducting Mahler's Second Symphony, an extraordinary work, requires a very large orchestra, soloists, chorus. The work lasts an hour and 15 minutes. It took me a year, every day, putting in a little bit, a little bit, a little bit to know what every player was doing, to know what I was going to do in every bar of music. Discipline is never trumped by the weather. It's never trumped by, I don't feel like doing it. Whether you feel like doing it, or whether it's raining, or the sun is shining, you do the work you have to do. And how many talented young musicians I have seen, tremendous ability, but simply did not have the discipline to do what they needed to do. A, attitude. That's an interesting word because it has two meanings in a way. In psychology, it, it's the, whether you have a positive or negative attitude about things around you. But aeronautically, there is a gauge on the airplane that talks about, it shows the relationship of the airplane to the horizon. And so there's a wonderful statement that says, your attitude will determine your altitude. Your attitude will determine your altitude. You can't go up if your nose is pointed down. There are people who say, well, it is uh, necessary to look at a glass and, and say, is it half full or half empty? There are people who not only see it half empty, but they can actually see the water evaporate. This kind of negativity destroys creativity. It is impossible to grow and to keep growing if you have a negative attitude. And so being positive opens the doors to extraordinary possibilities. Maintenance. I define maintenance as 
being the antidote for the virus of decay. The antidote to the virus of decay. Things left to itself decay. When my children were growing up, the greatest thing that I could say to them is, I'm going to take you to Disneyland. One, two, three times a year we go to Disneyland, right? Same rides over and over again. My wife would take a book and sit down and read somewhere, and I'd traipse along ride after ride, year after year after year, and I'd say, can't they get tired? <sighs> then one day, I happened to look, really take a look around me. And it dawned on me that Disneyland looked exactly the same as the day it was built. Maintenance. Maintenance is progress. If you can maintain, you can retain. Great singer, Leontine Price. And periodically in her extraordinary career, she would stop singing for a while. And when she came back, the voice was more glorious than ever. And they said, how is this so? She said, I had to rest the voice to maintain. Do you know that it's easier to achieve excellence than it is to retain excellence? To stay on the top of your game? It means that you have to do whatever you need to do. I think of Madonna, who keeps reinventing herself. If you have a glorious voice and you're getting older, you have to figure out Maybe you need to sing in a key a little lower. Or maybe you ought to stop singing. <laughs> you have to do what you need to do to maintain what you have. Maintenance is expensive. It is expensive in time. It is expensive in attitude, it is expensive in discipline, it is expensive in ability. And the greatest disservice we do to young people or those who want to achieve great things is not telling them the truth, sitting with them and helping them to work through what they need to do. What skills do you naturally have that can be developed? Are you prepared to be disciplined and to work regardless of how you feel? Are you prepared to have an attitude that looks up and out and seeks creativity? Are you prepared to do whatever you need to do to maintain what you have achieved? If you're willing to do this, this becomes a plan to success and a plan for success. The, the one thing that is worse than being blind is to have sight and no vision. And so I encourage all of you, whatever field you may be in, 
young people, as you are moving towards some goal, assess your ability. Get help in assessing your ability. Be disciplined. Have a great attitude and be prepared to maintain what you have achieved. I thank you.